Okay, uh, this will be a quick video to show you how you can use a program called Data Analysis on your iPad to draw sort of physics level graphs. So what you've done previously in year 10 and before may not be suitable here. So we can look at how you can make a proper scientific, you know, senior level graph using your iPad. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm on my PC here. I'm gonna airplay to this in a second, but this is basically the data we've got here to work with. Um, and your data will look a little bit like this as well. Now when you go to make your tables of data like this, you will need to do this in perhaps in pages or in numbers. Um, the data analysis tool we're going to look at doesn't, I believe, allow you to actually do tables, it just does graphs. Uh, the reason we're using this rather than numbers is because data analysis allows us to add a line of best fit easily, whereas the other ones numbers and Excel as well I think which has just come out on iPad I don't believe either of them do it in the case of um, numbers it's just not built into it and I reckon from memory in the case of Excel it does do it but you have to buy the, the paid version which is quite expensive the free version which you can download is okay but it doesn't do lines of best fit, like proper lines of best fit for a scientific graph. All right, so this is what you should have, something like this, a column with mass, the times for 10 swings from the different trials you did, uh, an average of those three in this column here, and then of course over here I've just um, divided that average by 10 because it was 10 swings to get like an average period, so 1.25 seconds, 1.23 seconds, and so on. About the only thing I would change here is I've forgotten to write up the top next to each table what things were held constant. So for example in the mass one if I was using an angle of uh, 30 degrees and I was using a line length of 50 centimeters I should have 30 degrees and 50 centimeters written there to remind me of that. Alright so let's get this iPad cranking. Okay so if you look on the screen here Data analysis you can see is the little icon sort of to the top right of my main screen here. Um, you can just download it off App Store by just doing a search for data analysis. Um, might be a paid version, I'm not sure, but there's certainly a free version which is what we'll be using today. So I'll open this guy up and um, <clears throat> what you want to do is press the plus button on here. Okay, now in here, the way you put your numbers in is it's a little bit weird. Um, you put in your X number first, and then a space, and then the corresponding Y number. So the first data point, I'm just going to do the mass one here, I'll do the mass graph. The other two, the angle graph and the line graph, will be exactly the same. So for the mass, the first point was 50 grams and... 1.25 seconds, so I put 50 space 1.25, then hit enter and go on to the next set of points. So the next set of points was 100 and 1.23, and then after that it was 150 and 1.22, and then the last one was 200 and 1.21. Right, so once you've entered in all of those points like that, so X number, then Y number with a space in between, you should be able to hit plot. Whoops, okay, and you do need to name it. Now, how the hell do you name it? Ah, here we go, you just have to tap your um, keyboard down, file name, we'll just call it something like varying mass, and while we're here, we may as well add the X label and the Y label. So the X label would be, okay, it's not gonna let me change the X label just yet. You will have to fill around a little bit with this like most iPad apps. Okay, now we should be able to press plot. Let's see what happens. Okay, and you can see at the moment, there's my graph now that's okay I guess the problems here is is that we'd prefer our graph to start from 0 rather than 1.21 it's exaggerated the scale there a bit 
and we'd prefer some labels as well. So, <clears throat> how do we do that again? Ah, here we go. Okay. I haven't used this for a while. So you've got down the bottom, you can see two things that look a little bit like a graph. The first one we're going to want to grab here is the one where the points appear as dots. Press on that, and then now we can change things. So we probably want to force the x axis to zero because at the moment it's starting at 40. So force x axis to zero, flick that on. Force y axis to zero, definitely. We don't want to start at 1.21. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Um, and then we can add an X label and a Y label. So the X label would obviously be mass, and then in brackets, um, a little lowercase, G for grams. And then the Y label would be something like average period, and then after that, bracket and then in there seconds so if we now press out that we can see we've got average period on the y-axis and mass on the x-axis as we should and then the last thing to do is to add a line of best fit now um, what we're going to be using for the time being is um, just a straight line later on we'll look at curved lines of best fit in physics we want a straight line, which is just what we call a linear function. So if you look in the box down the bottom, it's got linear function. It's got y equals mx plus b, which we call y equals mx plus c, but we know that's the equation of a straight line. So that's good to go. If we wanted to add a curved line, we'd have to change something. But at the moment, it's cool. So we just should now press the fit thing in the bottom corner. And there we go. So now if you look at the graph, you've got your data points there. You've got... Um, labels on your axes, you've got a line of best fit. It looks like it's just joined all the points together, but in this case it is an actual proper line of best fit. It's just that all of the points are lined up, so when you add your line of best fit, it goes exactly through them rather than going roughly through the middle. And then the data down the bottom could be used to write an equation for the line of best fit if we wanted to as well. In this case here, we won't bother because we can see pretty clearly that it's basically just flat. Okay, so it's not the prettiest graph in the world, but it does have that line of best fit which will become crucial as we go further into this topic. You need to be able to add lines of best fit to graphs, and they need to be done in such a way like using a special mathematical algorithm that you can get a proper equation. It's not like it was in previous years where you just get a ruler and roughly draw a line in between them. It's got to be done properly this time. Okay, so once you've got that, you should be able to press on it. Okay. Maybe not. Ah, there we go. Hold it down and um, you want to probably, because you'll probably, if you're doing it on the iPad, you'll probably be doing your report in um, <clears throat> pages. You want to copy the graph and then if you go back to some sort of word processing thing, that's not what we want. Let's create a document. Let's make it blank. If you go back to your document, you should then just be able to hold down and select paste, and there's your graph. And it's as a picture, so you can then drag it to rescale it. All right, so it's a bit fiddly, but that is the only way you'll be able to get that to work on an iPad. Numbers is okay, but numbers will not give you a proper scientific line of best fit. So I would recommend you either use this for doing your graphs or, let's be honest, just ditch the iPad and get a proper computer with Excel or something like that. If you do have a MacBook, the numbers that comes on MacBook is not the same as iOS, not the same as iPad. It's got a lot more stuff in it. It'll be able to do the stuff you want to do. So that's fine as well. But iPad, numbers, not so good. Okay, that's it.